Hiya, I'm Elish, and this week what's on my mind are future library careers. So this little video is going to be based on a talk that Fiona and I gave with Sillips SNPC, um, which is the Students and New Professionals group for Sillips Scotland. Um, and that was really kind of born out of providing a bit of an introduction to PTFS, working in open source, giving a wee bit of background to Fiona and I and how we got into our current roles. But also um, I spent a bit of time trying to do a bit of forecast and taking the temperature for the library sector and reporting back into what kind of things we might expect to see and shape the sector in 10 years time or so. So let's get into it. Here are my high points. So going to be talking a little bit about how it looks from here. Um, very quickly touch on the sort of back to basics. Also looking at key skills and future prospects. So first of all, how it looks from here. Um, we've already seen a growing complexity within the library sector and um, it's now well established that desirable future skills are largely related to operating and navigating on the internet. It's really a moot point at this stage to say that developments over the past two years have underlined the centrality of networking, connectedness and social information in our everyday lives. Ten years ago, um, two sociologists called Rain and Wellman described our change in information behaviour as networked individualism, which I think is a really prescient term given um, how social media has evolved the past decade, but also thinking about now um, the big changes we're seeing and the sort of initial discussions around concepts like the metaverse on our virtual online spaces. Uh, we've developed new ways of managing our information use in the context of social and mobile media, which are part of networks that aren't limited by physical space. They're flexible, adaptive, global, and essentially they now constitute the basis for today's online society. Indeed, for library professionals, this presents, presents a lot of scope for new opportunities to create much needed efficiencies for complex information management. And many of those opportunities actually exist outside the traditional roles that we might think of. That being said, uh, I think that the professional identity of librarians is still firmly anchored to those traditional core values and competencies, which I'll touch on. Um, they'll really remain essential, I think, in spite of broader contextual changes that we'll look into now. So, um, as published in the Occupational Outlook Handbook by the Bureau of Labor Statistics in the US, um, it's been predicted that there'll be a 9% growth in the library job market in the UK and US in the coming decade. Um, and this doesn't even include the expand, expanding field of informational professionals like digital asset managers or corporate archivists, to name a few non-traditional roles that we can also um, account for a level of growth in. Um, also, what gets missed out of figures like this are private sector roles, um, such as my own, um, which are also an expanding area. Even in the past 10 years, we've seen that the required skill set has changed dramatically. Um, already, I'm sure you've seen a lot of um, list job posts for non-traditional jobs like digital asset managers, digital curators, and social media managers, and other content specialists. And digital content has already become so, so, so central to the role of librarians and will continue to be really relevant. Um, the report that I've just mentioned um, really looks into how work will be impacted by the intersection of seven mega trends that they've identified. The main one that they put a lot of emphasis on is new technology again. They think that this is really what's going to be the biggest driver of change. And that um, mainly pertains to the rise of automation, which is right on top of their number one mega trend that's going to impact the uh, workforce in general. Um, the other trends are globalization, demographic change, environmental sustainability, urbanization, rising inequality, and political uncertainty. As libraries are fundamentally concerned with people, society, communities, I think it's fairly obvious to any list worker that um, these concepts will shape the nature of our working lives. Um, but they're worth anticipating when we consider what future skills we need to cultivate as a response to both the changing job market and the changing work environment. So quickly then, 
we just think about going back to basics, the core values of librarianship, they're the most consistent things that we can draw on our inclusiveness, diversity and intellectual freedom. Perhaps a decade or two ago, we could take these core values for granted and just kind of complacently see libraries as a force for good in society. But in more recent years, um, we've seen how we need to be more proactive about enacting these core values, things like decolonizing our collections and making a big effort to diversify the profession. I've already have a, had a positive impact and reflect larger societal changes that we need to be reflecting in our work and in our workforce. This kind of action shows that we can apply our skills and turn values into actions that better the profession for the future. But this kind of approach relies on some of the key skills that I'm going to touch on now. Just go back into my main one and here we go. So um, the first one's maybe not that surprising that I've got listed here. Uh, and that is uh, management and leadership skills. This is something that I think increasingly is being emphasized and there's been a big attention um, paid to them on um, lists postgraduate courses. Um, I've maybe mentioned in other talks for PTFS Europe or other wee bits of content that I'm in my third year of my master's in library and information management with the University of Ulster. And um, we had a whole semester devoted to um, management and looking into kind of management theory, management styles, big piece of coursework on um, comparing, contrasting different bits of management style. Um, and I think it's really key to look for a course that strikes the right balance of technical skills along with communication and management skills. If you are at the stage right now where you're looking into doing um, further education in the library and information sector. Um, so this could encompass things like budgeting, marketing, community outreach, leadership and instructional skills. The key thing here, if we're thinking about skills for the future and what kind of jobs will be out there in 10 years time, all these skills have a wider application and thereby enhance the reach and relevance of library and informational services. But also, if we think about it in a personal level, your own skill set and employability would be so enhanced by cultivating these skills, which is good for kind of looking at those um, non-traditional roles and things outside that traditional library setting. Secondly, then, there's ever more emphasis on interpersonal skills. Um, as I mentioned there, the biggest mega trend that we're meant to be taking account of here is increased automation and AI. Um, these skills include teaching, social perceptiveness, service orientation and persuasion. Um, other noted mega trends that we talked about there are demographic change and increased inequality would ideally call for societal infrastructure that provides more of a human touch. And that's where the library comes in. Interpersonal skills are an enduring library skill that will only increase in importance with automation and AI, etc. cetera. Um, because I guess if we're competing against um, super efficient robots, that's one area that we can always outpace them, you'd like to think. Um, but anyway, I think, you know, taking it into account um, the other kind of um, social implications of the mega trends anyway, having that human touch um, will become all the more important. Lastly then, um, the report from the Occupational Outlook Handbook also confirms the importance of higher order cognitive skills, what they call higher order cognitive skills, which is inclusive of kind of complex problem solving, originality, fluency of ideas and active learning. And um, so I think the, this kind of idea of cultivating higher order cognitive skills um, largely speaks to how we can't fully anticipate the changes that we're going to see to the sector in our lifetime. We're just at the incipient stages of discussion around the metaverse and virtual spaces online. Uh, I don't think, you know, in the 60s, librarians could have ever conceptualized contemporary practice around managing your library social media accounts, for example. Therefore, cultivating these more general skills around being an adaptable and agile thinker, a lifelong learner, will see you well in a sector that will continue to see a lot of change. So, thinking about future prospects. Um, 
Again, in addition to work in traditional library settings, the expertise of librarians is increasingly employed in the private sector and jobs for librarians outside traditional settings are expected to actually grow the fastest in the next 10 years if we look at other bits of research that have come out in the past um, two years or so. Um, and this is because uh, there is such a massively expanding amount of information available online and it really requires professionals who can find, sort and process it effectively, enter librarians and information professionals. Um, as a result, we're seeing librarians increasingly work for private corporations, non-profits and consultant firms. Uh, we're also seeing more and more independent information professionals with titles like information brokers setting up businesses to research and manage information for clients on a case by case business, which is really interesting to see. Um, Still, I think in 2022, we're seeing a distinction between skills needed in a traditional library setting versus a digital context. Um, however, I'd argue that this is increasingly irrelevant, um, both because the line between the virtual and the real is increasingly blurred, um, and also the idea of traditional library settings and indeed roles is becoming a bit redundant. Um, traditional library skills are connected to collecting and organizing information, and this is beginning to going to become increasingly important as we develop our online spaces. Even at this stage, if you think about our digital repositories, our VLEs, or more informal networks like wikis, forums, etc. Information is no longer just library property, and there's a need for an understanding of how people actually seek and use information online. Uh, which also then calls for the creation of well-managed information spaces online. The libraries um, could really become a leader in this area as the conversation grows. Um, but already, I think in recent years, we're seeing more and more call for knowledge management specialists who capture knowledge and make it readily usable and shareable, and information architects um, who design the kind of conceptual structure and logical organization of websites, intranets, and online communities. Um, these are titles that you'll see in job postings today. And I think we're just gonna see more and more of that as again, our information networks become more complex and call for that higher level of expertise. So that's just a little bit of a condensed version of the wee talk that I gave for Sillip's SNPC. Um, so thanks ever so much for listening. We're looking to do a wee bit more of these general kind of thoughts on the sector sort of whims. So any feedback in the comments would be greatly appreciated. And if you're not, please subscribe to us and you can always check out the archives of whims if you're um, looking for any more content on how to get the most out of your co etc. But thanks ever so much for listening. Hopefully catch you again in the next video.